I've got a phenomenal guest with me in studio, someone who many of you as football lovers will be well aware of, but also respect him in terms of his leadership accolades that he's also acquired across the continent and of course within the sporting fraternity overall. Join me because tonight we have a phenomenal Pivot Point guest, someone who isn't necessarily in the business world but certainly knows much about the business of sport, coaching and leadership. This is Pivot Point. Pivot Point on Kaya Biz. Indeed, it's Pivot Point here on Kaya Bears and Kaya 959. And if uh, you have just joined us, we are about to engage in conversation with an award-winning football manager, also known as Coach of the Year, uh, someone who has really led the significant successes of football clubs in South Africa and across the continent. And so much so that he's now choosing to give back and launching a soccer school in a bid to unearth local football talent. I am joined by... Ndate Pizzo Musimani. Welcome to the show, Coach. Uh, thank you, uh, Sis uh, uh, Gugu. And uh, thanks uh, uh, for bringing me here. We're excited to have you here. Don't be shy. I must tell you I'm the envy of many of my colleagues. Is that so? 100%, sir. Okay. I'm happy <laughs> to hear that. But also... Um, evening to the listeners. Indeed. And for many South African listeners, I, I guess we're quite excited to have you not only back in the country, but here in studio as well to reflect on a myriad of themes. And <sighs> my soccer and football and sports colleagues would not forgive me for not asking the big question. You're back. You've made big moves across the continent. Uh, we're well aware that you recently parted ways with our Akhli. Tell us why. Yeah, it was just time. It was about time. Yeah. Um, very difficult decision to make. Mm-hmm. Um, voluntarily left. Uh, of course, it was a shock mm-hmm. to everybody, even the club. But um, I just felt it's the time to leave, you know. I renewed the contract last year and I thought I'll stay longer. Yeah. But, um, you know, every good thing comes to an end. So I felt that um, I must just give hand over to the next coach and can take the team to a higher level. Got you on that one. That's the big question for my sports colleagues, because now we're going to talk all things about leadership. And I think there's something so critical about your journey as a coach, right? Yeah. Because essentially you were a leader. You're the CEO uh, at some point in terms of unearthing talent and, and, and the club. And I'm intrigued already to, I guess, take it to my next question as to what leadership lessons have you learned in terms of coaching, whether it be a team like Al Ahli or even the likes of Sundowns here in South Africa? Yeah, I just feel that... Uh, f- Football has been ahead of business. That's my opinion. In terms of uh, leadership, and football is a little bit more tougher than business. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking about CEOs here. I mean, when do they report to 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 the to the um, shareholders and all that? Maybe once or twice or to the true once twice a year. Mm-hmm. We report every three days to 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 our. Our people, to our supporters, we are scrutinized by the media every game. Mm. And every three days, there's a match. Mm. So you can't hide. Mm. Uh, but as a CEO, you can always say, you know, like we have done this before and next year we think we can do it better. Yeah. And you come once or twice or three times in a year. Yeah. We are in the soup every three days. You can't hide in football. Right. Because if you don't do well in the match... Everybody's watching. Yeah. Who's watching the CEO if he doesn't do well, or if doesn't the company <laughs> doesn't do well? True. So you can see that we have we have always led uh, in football. We are accountable. Uh, we are transparent, and uh, we are open for criticism every time, every day. Definitely. Yes, and um, your, the results, your results says it. Everybody knows if you follow a certain team you know that my team didn't do well last week. Mm. If you are in a company, how do you know that the, the company didn't do well last month or last week? Exactly. Nobody knows. You, you can hide it. 
you can <laughs> cook the books or, or wait for the financial results to come out six months or a year later. Yeah, and you can always make an excuse, you know. Exactly. <laughs> not with football, clearly. No, you've got no chance. <laughs> Coach, you raise such a valid point because this conversation is fundamentally based on pivot points, right? And pivotal lessons and pivotal experiences that shape uh, leadership mindsets, that shape cultures and communities that shape sectors as well. And for the longest time, I, I, I believe that from an outsider's view looking in, specifically on the African continent, f- coaching, football and the sports fraternity perhaps has not received the necessary accolades that it should in terms of uh, the, the acumen, as you mentioned, that's required of you as a leader. What pivotal changes do you think still need to take place, given what you've observed in terms of the respect for not only the, the, the culture and foot, of football, but also the role that coaches do play uh, in unearthing yeah, but new talent? When you are a football coach, uh, I always advise anybody not to be a football coach because I don't Why? think it's a good decision to do. We want to be like you. No, you cannot be like me because you, you want to be away from home all the time. Mm. You want to be scrutinized every three days. Yes. You, you, you want, you, will you take the criticism? So you say there's more bad than good sometimes? Uh, it's a package. Mm-hmm. There's always, we, 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 okay, sometimes we get, like I'm here now. Yeah. Okay, these are the benefits of the goodies or, or, or attributes that comes along with that. But um, uh, it's an ungrateful job. Uh, you're only good as your last game. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares what you have done for the last two years or three years. Uh, whereas in business, they can say, hey, he led the company to a successful year or two years back and, you know, the company just took a dip a bit and yeah. will, will, and the profits are there. But in football, you are sacked. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've been sacked before. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, when I was a national team coach for South Africa and I know how it felt. Yeah. And I don't. Uh, I, I feel it was not justified because of the reasons. Because I think I lost two games in two years, and I was sacked. How about Got that? You. So how, how how grateful or ungrateful is football? Mm. So and you raise a valid point. Then if you if you're raising these concerns to say that it's it, it's a package, uh, sometimes mm. with more cons than pros. How is it then that you try to? N- not personalize that potential negative sentiment so it doesn't affect the team or your work on a day to day basis. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's you, you have to take it the way it is. Uh, I was sacked, as I told you, in Bafana. Mm-hmm. I left Sundowns. I left Alakli. Yeah. It's the biggest club in the continent. Mm-hmm. I mean, who would live at the biggest club in the continent? It's the biggest club. There's nothing bigger than that. But you did because your vision is bigger than that. Yeah, it's, it's not all about the vision. It's about also the right time. Also, sometimes you you feel it's okay, it's, it's done. It's probably you move to another continent yeah. or probably you you step back and, and take a rest. Uh, big coaches like Pep Guardiola, they've done that. Ancelotti has done that. Sit down. Hasn't coached now. Mm. He's won three Champions League. Mm-hmm. He's not coaching. So I'm happy to take a break. Mm-hmm. I'm happy to wake up at 11 a.m. <laughs> and I'm happy that no, I'm not accountable to anybody at this point in time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll get back when I feel I want to go back. What's beautiful is that, as you say, you're not accountable to anybody. You'll get back when you want to get back. But yes. You're doing something so much more powerful than that by looking to unearth more talent within South Africa. Ah, now you're football touching football. me now. You're yes. coming to, to my soft spot. Let's go there. Yeah, I I have uh, I've started the Pizzo Musimani Soccer Schools. Uh, we'll be launching, I think, in September. Beautiful. Um, I just feel that I don't want to be coach that everybody knows as the coach of this team and that team and he won this trophy or that trophy. Mm-hmm. And then where does it end? Mm. Uh, I I just think I should leave something behind, a legacy behind. And also, I, I know where I come from. I know where my background is from, you know. I I just feel that I, I can just give a helping hand to somebody yeah. and give other children a chance. I was given a chance by... Jomasono, yeah. he discovered me at school, and he gave me a chance. He says, "Come to football." I mean, look where I am now. Life could have been different. I don't know how, where I would I would have been now. True. So, so I feel also I have to give back 
to other children get chance. And he got me from the school. So that's why I'm going back to the schools because the schools have really, really produced f uh, players. Yeah. Stephen Pinaro has taken from school, yeah. Benny McCarthy and them. So I'm going to the schools. I don't want to interfere with any Premier Soccer League clubs. I don't want politics. So you're taking it back to fundamentals, which comes, I guess, at quite an investment, right? Are there are partners that you're working with to, to help with yeah, funding, well, well, um, support, grooming? Yeah, yes, of course. You've got to get uh, uh, and, um, blessings also um, from the football clubs also, you know, um, <laughs> Spoke to Dr. Koza of Orlando Palace. He mm -hmm. knows about it. Uh, um, uh, Dr. Mutaung, Keza Mutaung of yes. Keza they know about it. Um, Danny Jordan knows about it. The uh -huh. president of SAFA, I spoke to him about it. He knows about it. Uh, and you want the blessings from them. I'm waiting for him to come back. He's still a bit busy. Got you. you want the, the government knows about it. The MEC of Sport, Mr. Panyan Zalashov, knows about it. The, um, the, um, the the DG of Sports in Hau in in Gauteng mm -hmm. came to my press conference the other time. He knows about it. Okay. E Egypt knows about it. The Africa knows about it. <laughs> I like that because you're spreading the word, you're spreading the messaging, and you're getting everybody's buy-in. And I'm already intrigued. What's going to make the school different? Because I'm thinking when I was 10, 9 years old, I didn't play soccer, but I played because I had lots of cousins and I grew up with boys. Yeah. And when we look at the current climate regarding football in South Africa and even across the continent, we know that we need more diversity. Uh, gender, and of course even guaranteeing and creating a sustainable role, right, for these young uh, football players to have sustainable careers in future where they won't necessarily grow broke. So uh, what's going to, to be the differentiator? Yeah, but uh, I I just don't do football in the schools because it's football. It's mixed with the academic side mm -hmm. because I think uh, if I had the right um, support or or, or background of proper education like my children in the right schools, I think I could have been maybe better person. Uh -huh. I don't know. But, um, you know, you always feel better when you're educated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm educated because I dropped out at varsity. So I'm not educated. So I want the boys to be able to read their contracts to be able to understand the contracts that they're signing, the endorsements, yep. uh, to market their brand, and, and, and to also be responsible in the community to, to, to know that they belong to the society, mm. that when they go back to the, where they come from, they must be accepted, mm. you know? Yeah, 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 you know? <laughs> so so that's, that's the whole thing. But, but above that is... You know, when I was coaching my uh, at my Melody Sundowns, I, w I was happy that I've, I have uh, I had the support, of course, from the club, obviously. But I was happy that I created millionaires. Yes. Uh, we can talk. Pesitao is a millionaire. Kivik and Dole is a millionaire. Bongani Zungu are millionaires, and 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 it's because of how I told them my story from the humble beginnings to say. It, this is the lead, the way to read, and then those people are supporting their families. So the generation of the Tau family is is not that bleak, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a chance to go to school, and this. So so that's what I believe in to create more. And uh, who am I in life now without football? Football has given me a a position and a stand and uh, a pride to 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 be able. To say I'm 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 proud to have left varsity and chose football. Yes, I am proud to do that. My and daughter is here. Exactly. She's uh, sit down on us, finish the honors. Uh, but um, I'm able to talk to her to say I'm also proud to be a football coach because I can raise a family. I can take them to school and I can have them 
to have a good life. And you've raised a viable career for, for yourself and, and your family, as you say, which is so critical. If you've just joined us, we're in conversation with Coach uh, Bitsu Musumane, who is uh, joining us in studio as our Pivot Point guest. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, someone with a wealth of experience within the coaching and football fraternity, now looking to launch his uh, own football school, Bitsu Musumane Soccer Schools, which will be launched in September, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and it's the right time for me to be here. Tell us exactly, right? Because it will be woman. Because I'm that you, home. Exactly. And let's touch on that because that's where the conversation started where you said coaching sometimes is not a job filled with uh, a lot of gratitude. You yes. spend a lot of time away from home. Yes. You've referenced your daughter. Yes. I'm aware that together with your wife, you've yes. actually built this phenomenal brand for yourself. Yes. And that tells us They're something building about it, you. Not me. They are building it. Yes. Tell us why that matters to you. Family first, but yet still taking them along with you for the journey to build your corporate career. Yeah, that's sacrificing the, uh, also their careers, their lives, because, because they're all... Uh, all went to school with degrees and all that in 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 every department that they are. My wife, she's a P, uh, project manager and she's by profession, she's a quantity surveyor in building construction. Mm-hmm. She was in charge for all the stadiums, the World Cup stadiums that are built in South Africa. Okay, people don't know that, uh, and and that's what they went to school for. She's yeah. got honors also, but they are working under my legacy to to try and leave something for me and my family and for generations to come. So they're sacrificing also their, their careers to to help me to, to do what I want, how nice it is, you know, to, to have support like that. And that tells us something about legacy, right? Yeah, well, yes, it does, to yeah. be honest, yeah. We we need to to to, to leave something that, peop- that a boy from Soweto who lived in my streets can say, that guy was in that house. Mm-hmm. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Coach, you're teaching us so many lessons tonight. Uh, the fact that you're able to build a career in a very different stream, primarily when it comes to f- comes to ball, uh, and of course how it is that you've taken your family with you along for the journey and being principled uh, in terms of the, the, the number of talented young football stars that you've been able to identify. As you go through this new journey of life, uh, as you look to unearth new talent, Taking it back to legacy, what's the final legacy that you want to be known for uh, beyond just being a coach in the football fraternity? Yeah, to have given people a break. That's why I always mention that uh, Joe Mosono and uh, you don't know those people in football probably and Stan Skrima Chabala. Yeah, we those do. Those are the guys who saw me play football and they believed in me. They said to me, come to football, You've got some, you, you, you have something to, to, to contribute to football, you know? I'm sitting here tonight. I'm the only guy in the continent who's won three Champions League mm. Cup finals, and no one has done that in history. And we need more of you. I, and no, but there's more. The, I think the young guys, like the Rulanis, whatever, one day they can do better than me. It, they must just raise the bar mm. a bit higher. But it's good for me to contribute to them also because I brought them to football. Mm. And he's, he's the nephew to Joe Masono. So, so I have to I have to give back also to their family, right? Because of how you were meant. To. Yes, because Joe Masono gave me an opportunity. I gave him the opportunity. Yeah. So this is Sono uh, blood. Got so, you. so it's always important to 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 always uh, uh, give an opportunity to somebody, and it's always important to leave a jersey in a better place. Got you. And then you mentioned a valid point because I'm really intrigued to actually ask you what your thoughts are on the current state of football in South Africa and the continent. Mm, not clued up much about what's happening in the country. I know only when I have to come home, like, like I luckily we played Mami Lodi Sundowns. Remember, they beat us twice. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> then then you, you say, oh, okay, the monster I've built is stronger. Right. And it's better, mm. you know, and you're happy that they are, they're better, they're stronger, they won the treble. But I always challenged them, I said, I've won two trebles. Yeah. So you have to do another treble. And the one treble I had, had the Champions League inside. Got you. You know what I'm trying to say? They won the league, they won the league. I said, okay, I did it to 72 points, 71 points. Yeah. You still have to make 72 one points. It means 23 wins out of 30 games. Sure. So I'm challenging them. Got you. And I think that's refreshing, as you say, building up a team to a point where you actually make it better than what you had initially left it off at and, and them being strong contenders. You have to leave the jersey at a better place. Yeah. So my space in Alakli for the last two years won seven trophies. Got you. Three Champions League finals. Got in you. a row. 
So I'm saying to the next coach, you have to leave it. You have to take it at the higher level. Definitely, and do better. Coach, I'm a female, and you know I'm going to challenge you and ask you about female football on the continent and South Africa. What do we need to do differently? Because this is a challenge that we are good. Being plagued we by. are good. We are good. But fun about Banyana Banyana. Yeah. We are good. We are top three in the continent. But we're not earning the same money as our peers. We're not oh, earning you're the same about the money. as well. Yes, ah, it's a business you, show. No, when you talk about money, you're right. Because the, the, the US uh, national team, the women's national team. Equal scale now. Equal scale. Yeah. But why not? Mm. Why can't you pay them the same way? What's the difference? And what do we need to do differently? Because I guess sponsorship, business community in South Africa, yeah, how but, do we get them yeah, to play a bigger we, role? We all have to, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, sports in general has to to really, really do better in terms of gender. Even even with tennis, uh, you, you know that Rafael Nadal and, mm. and, and the other guys, uh, they're any more, yes. more than the ladies. Mm-hmm. But why? Why? What's the, what, what's the criteria? What do you, why, why should you end less? So it's the same in football. It's the same in, 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 in a job. I have my daughter, I have my wife. They're all working. Yeah. So I would like them when they are at their, at their job. Why shouldn't they earn as much as the other people? So you're challenging us to say that we should be paying Banyana Banyana equal pay. But why not? Unless we have, a, we have a reason not to do that. Well, we don't. Somebody must give me a reason. Yeah. If I haven't found the, the, the reason for that. So they deserve it. And uh, what a, a reference is the U.S. national team. Exactly. And nothing has happened. And that's my, I guess, my challenging question to you in your engagements with members of the business community, if they have to play a bigger role. Yeah, but also sometimes I just feel corporate, especially that sells women products. Where are they? Ah. They, ah. Should, they should support the ladies. Eh? Uh-huh. So, you know what I'm trying to say? Got you. So we should not just look at it as male dominated or influenced by, you know, we, 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 we should also say there are CEOs, there are marketing people in, 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 as women mm-hmm. who make decisions. Mm-hmm. So support football, support the banana banana, support. It doesn't have to be football. Support the ladies in, in, in sports. Mm-hmm. Give, them a, 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 give them endorsements. Let them have the cars also. As exactly. other. But uh, so that's why I'm also giving it to you now. I'm challenging giving it to you to uh-huh. say, uh, where are the companies that sell women products that make money out of women? Very true. Yes. And as we know, though, that's quite a significant expense for many South African women um, and something that does need to be considered and brought to the fore. It's definitely a key uh, and important aspect in terms of making sure that we improve the, the culture of sports participation yes. and the commercial in, viability in as well. In the soccer schools, yeah. there's ladies, there's women. I'm happy to hear so. Yes. Are we, am I too old to join? <laughs> uh, not really. Depends how good you are. Eh? Uh, uh, because uh, Ronaldo can be 36 skills. and he's still good. I'm so, uh, much younger S- than him. Then? But I've got some skills. Then you have chance. Perfect. So let's come and see you. Maybe <laughs> you, 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 you've got some dribbling there or you can score goals and why not? I, I can. Even being a goalkeeper, that's what my brothers used to do to me because, uh, yeah, uh, maybe she shooting plays was also not with my, the brothers. My oh, your daughter. Yeah, yeah, she plays the brothers. For also. our sins, right? <laughs> being the only girl. But on that note, if we do have to wrap up coach this could be a conversation that can go on for hours on end um and we appreciate the leadership insights that you've shared with us the duality of the pros and cons of being a coach but still being committed to actually unearthing new talent and again as we wrap up you've told us what the legacy is in terms of uplifting new talent Mm. but the big question is how do we take it forward especially in terms of the commercial viability of more careers within the realm of football beyond coaching beyond being a player but the full ecosystem in in a football environment we have a doctor in the football environment, we have a physio, mm-hmm. we have a marketing person, mm-hmm. we have somebody who writes contracts, we have lawyers in football. Uh, so this, this you can you can design a stadium, architect. So football gives you, gives everybody opportunity. If you love football and you like football, and you also specialize in whatever field that you are doing, yeah. there's also all the time an opportunity to 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 do that that's the beauty of football so football offers all these opportunities mm. i i employ doctors physios uh media all these guys so so there is an opportunity in football so 
that's why I mean I'm doing Pitom Suman and soccer schools. It's not about talent. Only it's also about the mass participation. I'm yeah. trying to teach children that this is a beautiful game, and you can be a marketing officer, you can be a lawyer in football, you can be a doctor in football. It's uh -huh. just you, you can be any design the stadiums. Exactly. You know. So that's what I'm trying to say. Love the game, and there's opportunities in the game. So come to football. Got you. Love the game and there's opportunities in the game. Next thing you know, we'll be uh, uh, teaching broadcasting at Pizza Musimani School and media training. For sure. Why <laughs> hint, not? Hint. Why not? No, it's true. Why not? There and, we go. Uh, and then you can come and uh, also uh, uh, help the girls with life skills, social and life skills. We need it. Exactly. Much needed. Thank you. Coach, thank you so much for your time this evening. It's been refreshing having this conversation with you and hearing a very different perspective um, from you on life coaching, family, leadership and the future that exists in the world of football. Thanks for inviting me but I just think you've put You've challenged me. You've put me on a business <laughs> leadership program. I'm just a football coach. Trust me, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from uh, yourself as a football coach, especially in terms of leadership. Thank you again for your time this evening. If you've just joined us, you've missed a phenomenal conversation with Coach Bito Mosimane, who's joined us here this evening, sharing a number of lessons with us and most importantly, encouraging us to be key participants within the world of football as opportunities exist. Love the game. The opportunities are there. And of course, we're looking forward to the official launch of the Beats of Musimani Soccer School taking place later this year. Thank you again, Coach. That was my Pivot Point guest, Beats of Musimani. Kaya Talk on Kaya 959. On the street, on the air.